Hey everyone, welcome back to the fish room. It has been way too long since we've done a proper tour and a lot has changed since then. So I wanna take you through what we have going on here in the basement. We're gonna quickly look at every tank we have here. We're gonna do some high level overviews, hit each tank pretty quick, and hopefully we're gonna have a good time doing it. Let's start over here on the left side of the fish room with this rack of 125 gallon aquariums. Let's start with some of my favorite fish here on the bottom tank. Now this tank is full of Malagasy cichlids. That is cichlids from Madagascar. Now all of these species are pretty endangered in the wild. So it's an honor and a privilege for me to be able to keep these fish. Now a lot of these are, I'd say sub-adults. So they don't have the coloration that they're gonna get later in life, but they're starting to show it. At least some of them are. This guy right here, he's starting to look pretty cool. That is a pinstripe damba, the Paratropolis minerambo. We also have some Tychochromis grandidieri, some other Paratropolis species like this Kienari here. And this is a cool tank. Uh, this isn't their forever home because those fish are gonna get pretty big. We actually have in the works plans to build another very large tank. And after that, we're gonna shuffle some fish around and these guys are gonna get a pretty good upgrade. But we don't have all day for every tank, so let's move on. Up top in this 125, we have some beautiful albino thread finicara. And these fish are stunning. I love their iridescent white and pink and orange colors and these trailing fins that they develop as they grow up into adults. That guy right there back there is the oldest. These still have some growing to do, uh, but they, they are absolute lookers when they grow up. And we also have a school of denison barbs in this tank, but I love denison barbs. Beautiful fish, love them in big schools so they can actually swim around together. Really awesome fish. Uh, something unique about this tank are these mangrove trees we have growing out of the top. Now, these are very slow growers, but these are actual trees. Uh, and a lot of people keep them in saltwater tanks, but if you get the right species of mangrove, you can grow them in freshwater. And I think they add a really cool element to the tank. And these are starting to get some good height to them. They've even started to sprout little baby branches. Now that took about two years of patience and maintenance to get that plant and then uh, this one here to start sprouting little branches. But I'm really happy with this tank. But hey, let's move on. Here we have probably one of the centerpieces of the fish room, I think it's fair to say. This is a 280 gallon aquarium with some beautiful adult frontosa. These are Mpimbwe blue frontosa. These fish are really cool. Uh, I love big fish, I love blue fish, and uh, these are both. And we have them here in an eight foot long tank. And I think that's a good size for them. Uh, we have about, I think 14 fish in here. Not the best ratio of males to females, but it's actually something we're gonna be improving in the future. But hey, let's move on to another really cool tank. And this is a DIY job. Uh, we built this plywood aquarium with these two corner glass viewing panels. This is a 200 gallon cube tank, measuring three feet by three feet by three feet. Now that last dimension, that three feet tall, that's pretty unique to aquariums. And this was a really fun build, and I enjoy uh, having these angel fish in here. We have some Philippine blue angels. We also have some quarry cats, and we got some rainbow fish. But the angels are meant to be the star of the show and they're beautiful and i am excited to breed these guys and just get a whole mess of fish in this tank this this can handle a lot more bio load than we have in it um, so we're gonna get this thing is gonna look beautiful once we get moving on that project we have to move on because we have a lot of tanks to cover this is just uh, more of a breeding setup uh, not the prettiest tank we have but the fish in here right now are awesome. These are Albino Alonacara Stuart Grantii from the High Reef Collection Point. And this is the beautiful male we have. But the thing about this albino version of the species, I love it because I think even the females look great. 
rather than just the battleship gray, they're this really cool orange, light orange color, which I think is nice. And moving on to, if not the best tank we have here, at least the second best. And this is a 600 gallon African Cichlid Aquarium. Now we recently put out a tank deep dive on this setup. So if you're more interested in this, go check that out. We cover this setup in detail. But this, this has a ton of awesome, beautiful fish in it. We have mostly haplochromines. We also have some dragon bloods and OB peacocks. Uh, this is a Malawi hawk, looking, looking really good. Uh, we got some Bucochromis rhodesii, uh, some wild caught Stigmatochromis woody, lots of uh, Surtacara morii. Oh man, just so many cool fish in here. And the best thing about this tank is this is my view when I'm sitting in my chair. After a long day, this is one of the chairs I have here in the fish room. I can just come and enjoy this. That is one heck of a view if I do say so myself. Moving on, here we have, I mean, more great tanks. I'm gonna say that about every setup. They're all great tanks. But let's start up here with this 225 gallon all glass build. Another DIY project, much like many of the big tanks you'll see in this video. And this is so funny. All the fish, they're kinda schooling real tight here in the corner because uh, this is where I feed them and they think it's feeding time. Uh, but we have, uh, this is kind of a, an assortment of fish at the moment, mostly serving as a grow out tank. And normally I, I would hate to put this on video because the aquascape is just absolutely dismal. I actually moved some fish out of here recently, sold some off, and you just have to tear apart the aquascape in order to catch these things. And I just haven't put it back together yet. But what we have in here still are some albino blue dolphins. And long term, those are going to go back to the, they're going to move into the 600 gallon that we just saw. We also have some deep water haps, the Placidochromis electra. We have some, you know, beautiful yellow labs, totally underrated fish in my opinion. Um, and you know, an assortment of other peacocks and uh, small haps. Mostly just growing out until we, you know, can move them into bigger tanks or find something else to do with this aquarium. Down below it is another 125. And this one has probably my most prized fish in the whole fish room. Some more Malagasy cichlids. And they're going to be pretty shy. But here, if we drop some food in, they're going to come out. All right, here we go, feeding frenzy. Now, I know these fish are not much to look at. They're gray and black. Not, they're not the prettiest. But these guys are so threatened in the wild. And they're so rare to find in the hobby. I am truly honored to be able to keep these fish, and I hope to breed them and propagate them through, uh, across more hobbyists, get more people keeping these things. Because well, they're not the prettiest, but I still think they are so cool. They are fascinating. And you know, forgive the glass on this tank. This is really scratched up. We're gonna get this tank replaced pretty, as soon as possible. Uh, but for now, it's just, we, got some, we just gotta deal with it. But these fish, I, I, I just love these fish. I, just, I get mesmerized by them, to be honest. We have the Tychochromis mainty, and we have the Paratropolis damii. They get big, you know, over a foot. So again, we're gonna have to upgrade them to a bigger tank long term. But for now, let's move on to likely the centerpiece tank in the room our 650 gallon monster tank. And obviously the star of the show here is Samson. This is our 34 inch fire eel. And he is a beast. I mean, look at this guy. Uh, he's definitely sort of the mascot of the channel, but he is so big. We also have some absolutely uh, stunning silver dollars. These guys, these are big. Uh, you probably can't tell it because this is a big tank. So all the fish look small in this thing. We also have some really cool cichlids. These are the Atropolis suratensis. These are the green chromites from India. You don't often see fish from India or, or cichlids from India. We also have, I mean, this guy right here is a character. This is one of our two albino giant garami. This guy is probably 13, 14 inches right now. He's probably got another 
eight inches, eight to ten inches on him to grow. Uh, but he's he's pretty big already. And we also have some bala sharks in here. I love this fish. The you know obviously the downside of the bala sharks is how big they get, and they tend to be marketed to newer people in the hobby that just don't have the tank space for them. Uh, but I love this aquarium. Definitely one of the centerpieces of the room. Moving on. We have a pair of 40 gallon breeders. Now we love big fish here, but there's also so many small fish that are just awesome. And I'd like to have some tanks in here where I can keep those species. What we have in here are a really interesting little cichlid from Lake Victoria. These are the Pundamilia macrocephala. Let's try to get a male. They have a distinctive pitch black body with red trimmed fins. It's a color combination that you don't see a lot in the African Rift Lakes, and I think it's a really cool little fish. But that's what we have in here. And, and I happen to like the aquascape. I think this turned out pretty well. We got some Seru stone in here. I kind of wish I went with an all-black substrate. Up top, we have a 40-gallon breeder that we're using for breeding. We have a trio of Matitlania myrnae, the topaz cichlid. There's a female right there. We'll see if we can get some b-roll footage of the male. Here's a pair of them from back when they were in the 200 gallon cube tank. And this is a really cool little cichlid from Central America. And you can keep them in groups as long as there's a decent male to female ratio. Moving over here to kind of uh, another good viewing corner. I have a nice little setup here, a little chair where I can look at all these aquariums we got. This is our last rack of 125 gallons. Down here on the bottom, we have some really awesome Starry Night Cichlids. Another cichlid from Madagascar, probably the most popular Malagasy cichlid. If you heard, have heard of any cichlids of Madagascar, it's these guys. Now these are about three inches, but the males grow up to 12 inches. Uh, females get about eight inches. So these guys are still young. But some of them are already starting to look really nice. Up top, we have probably my favorite African cichlid, the Mylochromus anifermis. These guys are so amazing. Here's a good male right here. And you just won't find these guys on the market. For some reason, they're just not very popular. And I think it's because they do take a while to color up. And a lot of times, fish that take a while to color up, uh, people just kind of don't give them a chance, which is a crying shame. I love this species. I'm always going to have a tank full of them. Looking over here at our rack of four 75-gallon tanks. Let's switch things up a bit. Let's start with a South American cichlid. Well, maybe to be fair, let's be accurate. This is a Central American cichlid. This is the Herichthys carpentis rio hondo. Uh, sometimes known as the pearl scale cichlid. Uh, it's not a Texas cichlid. I know it looks like a Texas cichlid, but it's not. This, this fish has more aquamarine coloration, and the, scale, the pearling of the scales is much more, it's a much tighter pattern, I find. And we have a couple random Africans in here by mistake. Uh, they have been doing all right, uh, but we need to get them out of here before too long. But yeah, that's a great fish. Uh, obviously, we love African cichlids here, uh, if you couldn't tell, but that doesn't take away from our appreciation for South and Central Americans. We don't have a ton of them, but we still think they're really awesome. Uh, in this 75, this is another kind of grow-out tank for... We have some really awesome fish in here. We have Exochromus anagenis. We have Taneolethronops preorbitalis. And then we have Labidochromus chiruleus. I might say, wait a second, Labidochromus chiruleus, you mean a yellow lab? Those fish aren't yellow labs. Well, this is the same species as yellow labs, but they're called zebra labs because they're a different collection point. And they are blue, bluish white with these black stripes. Really cool fish. But yeah, this tank is kind of serving as a grow out until these fish get some size on them. And then long term, I actually think I actually think I might use this as a rainbow fish aquarium. We might get some plants up in here. It's been, it's been a while since we've had a proper planted tank here in the fish room. But we might, we might switch this out once these fish 
uh, grow old enough to move into some, into some of the bigger tanks we have. Uh, but down below, this is a unique tank here. It's discus. Now, again, we love Africans, but we also have a special place in our hearts for discus. And these guys, yeah, they're, they're getting some good size on them. I'm probably going to pick the couple best looking ones, best looking male and female to breed. Uh, you know, they're not show discus. Um, I'm kind of a discus snob, to be honest. So I understand fully that these aren't the best looking discus around, but I still like them. I still appreciate them and enjoy having them. Uh, but when you look at some of the, when you, especially the discus shows over in Asia, um, you get big, round, striking fish. Um, but I, I think these guys work out. I think these guys are great all the same. But hey, moving on to this tank over here. Not a super exciting one. Just another 75 gallon that we're using as a breeding setup. We have a pair of adult Nimbochromus venustus. Uh, this is those same fish back when they were in the 600 gallon. So we just have them in this 75 gallon temporarily to breed and get some fry to raise up. And here we're moving on to our last two tanks. This is a rack of 60 gallon aquariums. Uh, another custom build here. Uh, so I built these out of some scrap glass that I picked up for free. But up here is a really interesting cichlid from Africa. But not from any of the lakes, not from any of the riverine systems to the west. These are from northeast Africa, in the deserts of Eritrea, uh, near Egypt, close to Egypt. And these guys are called Danachilia species Shukarei. And they are a hot water cichlid. They need their water at least 85 degrees. They are fast. I mean, they are voracious. And it's kind of hard to get a good, <laughs> good shot of them. But the males have a, they, they have sort of like a lemon lime green body. But as they, I've never had them into maturity. But from the photos I've seen, they're going to develop a really cool nuchal hump and some blues as well. Uh, down beneath it, we have some very, very precious fish to me. I know that sounds weird, but they are. And I actually get some, uh, some real emotions when talking about this tank because it actually represents one of my greatest failures in the hobby. These fish are not doing well. I'm trying everything I can to save them. Some of them are still looking pretty good. Like this guy right here, that's a good looking, that's a healthy looking specimen. But this one right above him, that is not a healthy fish. I've thrown every, every treatment at them I could think of. Um, but hey, I don't want to dwell too much on this tank. Hopefully I can share the, these fish with you again in the future on a much more positive note. But that's actually the last tank I have to show you. So that about wraps us up for today, everyone. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video tour. I really enjoyed sharing it with you. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the section below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you saw anything here that you find interesting or would like to see more of, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a ton. And it really, you know, allows me to continue putting out more content from the fish room. Stay tuned, everyone, and I'll see you next time.